one. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of letters. Did you receive a letter? Yes. Can you raise them up? I choose VR because it is the letter that I cannot pronounce. Okay, so did you already create something with these letters? So some words or something similar? I can, I can recognize a couple of, oh yeah, oh, hi, good. Not quite sure, but good. A lot of point in Razzl because you use, use the age. Okay, CD, okay, accepted. Okay, 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 then you will have uh, more time to create something new if you want. Um, so it's time for me to reveal which is the meaning of these letters. Um, these letters represent in some way the current trend in content creation. This trend is about fragmentation and bundling and immediacy of fruition. So the point is that uh, uh, the content is now split into several small pieces of content, just like the letters that you have in your hand. Uh, the most famous example um, is in the music industry, because once upon a time, we were used to buy the album. So the product was the album. Now the product is the single song after the iTunes revolution. But we can uh, spot the same trend also in uh, drama narration, and it explains the great success of uh, TV series, Lost, Dexter, Californication, uh, Breaking Bad, Homeland. A lot of people watch this TV series. TV series are short. They are composed by episodes that are short, even shorter than the classical length of a movie. Um, we can spot this trend even in television, in TV format. Let's talk about one of the most successful TV format worldwide, X Factor. Uh, X Factor is created like a, a live show, live show formed by uh, several performances. But a great part of its success is due to what happened to X Factor from the day next, so the day after the show, when the show itself is split into several videos and each video has its own life over the web. Another great example is TED. TED itself is following this trend. First rule of every TED speech, the speech needs to be short, 18 minutes max. And today here, we are creating a live show, a live show formed by several speeches with a common topic, the future. But when the video will be online, our speeches won't be linked anymore. This trend is perfectly matching with the evolution of human brain. Because human brain now, once, prefers uh, small contents, quick contents, con contents that are easy to be accessed. And first of all, the brain wants to be overstimulated. So we need for several stimulation at the same time, several media at the same time. For example, if you are, if we are watching a TV program that is normally monostimulus, we, we ourselves, we create another layer of complexity. For example, chatting or tweeting, commenting what is happening in the TV show. All news television already understood this trend. In fact, they lay out, think about television like CNN or Bloomberg, they lay out is full of different information at the same time. So this layout is aimed to entrap our brain and trap our attention and avoid, uh, avoid us to change the channel. I think that in the future, also movie narration will use this technique. So we'll be used to see a movie into two separate screens. Screen number one showing the story from the point of view of a hero. Screen number two, for example, showing the story from the point of view of a villain. Okay, it is quite strange to accept, to understand it of such an evolution. But if you think about it, there are some uh, TV series like CSI or 24 that are already using this technique in some connecting scenes. The point is that, uh, um, resuming this trend and this evolution, we can say that we are moving from a vertical cognitive approach to an horizontal cognitive approach. Or I prefer to say that we are moving from a linear narration to a non-linear one. And, most important thing, our level of acceptance 
of a story that is completely told by someone else is getting lower and lower. So we, as content creators, should manage this trend, should uh, find some way in which uh, we can play an active role in this trend, in this evolution. And um, I think that in the future, uh, there will be two directions, two main directions for content creation. Direction number one is taken from video game world. Um, in a book I recently read something very simple but very enlightening. Uh, the author, that was uh, Nick Bilton, he basically wrote, okay, it's quite, uh, um, it's quite hard to find a guy who is reading a book for several hours, but it is quite common to find the same guy who is playing a video game all day long. So, the point is that it is not correct to say that we are no more capable to concentrate, but we should say that the configuration of concentration has changed. And so we, as content creators, should go and look for the shape of this new configuration. What we can take from video game, um, there are a lot of techniques that video game use in order to entrap our attention. And so that now I, I don't want to list all of them. But I want to resume all of them only one word. One word that is so important in video game industry and should become so important also in content creation industry. This word is immersiveness. Immersiveness means to plunge into the content, to plunge into the experience. I think that in the future, we will attend an immersiveness challenge. So I mean that the competition among uh, content creators will move to that playground. And the competition, once again, will be driven by advertising. Since advertising, as you know, has always been one of the main drivers in content creators. So advertising, up to now, is paying according to volumes. I mean number of audience, number of viewers, number of uh, users. But if I am exposed to different channels, to different media at the same time, advertising will stop to pay for each one of these media. They will start to pay according to my immersiveness level in each media. So the advertising payoff will move from volumes to intensity. Immersiveness is also related to another important concept, that is experience. The point is that people do not pay for the content. People pay for the experience. Think about it the next time you go to the cinema, where you are paying money to watch a content, when you can see the same content at home, at a cheaper price. In fact, movie industry already understood this point, and so they invested a lot of money in 3D technology. 3D technology is something that can enhance the experience and can improve the immersiveness level. And so they also can create a competitive advantage versus the home theater system. So versus your alternative experience with that content. So that was direction number one, immersiveness. Um, direction number two. Direction number two is related to a definition I found uh, in a book, in another book. Uh, it was a book about uh, political and social sciences, but I think that this definition is perfectly describing the evolution of the role of content creator. The definition is choice design. So, I think that in the future, content creators will become choice designer, which is the main duty of a choice designer. Basically, it's to create the architecture, the framework, where the audience can move, where the audience can make their own choices, and where the audience can create their own story. This is strictly related with the experiment of the letters we perform in the beginning, the beginning part of the speech. So in this experiment, I played the role of a choice designer, since I gave you the letters. And most important thing, I did not give you any rules about the way you, in which you have to use the letter. So you can do whatever you want with these letters. So you can create words, like some one of you did. You can create sentences. You can create sentences and words in the language you prefer. You can create even a game, a game that is inspired by Scrabble, a game inspired by Razzle, or a game inspired by something completely new. The point is that you can create what you want. So you can create your own story. 
this will be the role of choice design. And as I mentioned before, since we, as a content creator, we will not be able anymore to tell you the linear story, you, we will be able to create the condition for the audience to create their story in the best way as possible. And this was the concept of choice design. Good, so I think that my time and my speech is going to finish because I, as I mentioned before, the first rule of that speech is to be sure, 18 minutes. And so my linear narration is ending up here and my role as content creators ends here. So now it's up to you. It's up to you to create your own story, to create your experiences, and to create your meanings. Good luck and bye-bye. <laughs>